Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I'm holed up in my studio all day today. I want to try and get as many projects as I can because I've got mum coming to visit me for a few days and she arrives tomorrow. She lives nearly three hours away. Today's project is really quick. It's going to be a cushioned seat belt cover or a luggage strap support. So if you have really heavy luggage that you're lugging around, you'll be able to put that on your shoulder strap as well and it'll stop it from cutting into your shoulder. So let's get onto that now. Okay, we need very little for this project and it's also incredibly quick. I have two pieces of fabric here that are 20 by 20 centimeters or eight inches square, two pieces of cotton. If you wanted something really soft around your neck or around your shoulder, then go and grab some fleecy or flannelette, something like that. Then I've got two pieces of fusible fleece, which are 18 by 18 centimeters square or seven and a quarter inch square. And the only other thing we need is either a piece of Velcro that's about 16 to 18 centimeters or seven inches, or you can use plastic or metal snaps. I don't have a Velcro that's suitable for this, so I'm going to use these little plastic snaps instead. You can use those little metal ones that you hand stitch as well. So there's plenty of options for you there. I keep all my little individual colors in a pill box. Well, several pill boxes. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is take our fusibles and attach that to the back of our fabric and you want to center that evenly so that you have your seam allowance evenly distributed around all four sides. My seam allowance is one centimeter so if you have a larger or smaller seam allowance you'll need to cut your fusible a little bit smaller or bigger depending on what you want. So I'll go and fuse those onto the wrong side of my fabric now. All right, the fusible fleece is attached to the wrong side of my fabric. If you're going to use Velcro, then you're going to need to position it within this boundary here. So I would come in about half an inch or one and a half centimeters from the edge of the fusible. Position one side of the Velcro onto the right side of your fabric and then take the other piece of Velcro and put that onto the right side of your fabric as well. And you'll stitch those in place. Um, as I said, I'm not using Velcro today, so I can avoid that step. Now, if you were making this with Velcro rather than plastic snaps, this is what you will need to do. You'll have sewn your Velcro onto your fabric with the fleecy behind it. You'll do that on one side of both of your pieces of fabric. Then when it comes time to closing up, the two layers of fabric, you'll take one piece and place that right side down on the other, but you want the Velcro at this end on one piece of fabric and the Velcro at this end on the other piece of fabric. So what you will do is you'll sandwich the layers together, Velcro top and bottom with opposing sides, and then you'll sew all the way around and leave that opening. But since we're not using Velcro, we can skip that step and get on to the next one. All we need to do here is place the two layers of fabric together with right sides facing, line that up evenly. Once you've secured the pieces down, we're going to take this to the machine and sew the whole thing closed and leave an opening just here. So we'll start here with a back stitch, continue on all the way around and finish up here. I like to reinforce my corners. I'll always stitch to the corner and then go back to and then go forward to. As I turn around, I'll go forward to, back to, and then continue on down. All right, the needles I'm using today are a size 12 or a number 80, and I use a three millimeter stitch length. And the reason for that is that it's easier to unpick when I make a mistake. I've lined up the needle position with the very edge of my fusible fleece there. I'll start on one side of the opening with a back stitch. And when I finished, I've left an opening of about three fingers width. There's a small opening just here. We need to trim our corners. And now we can turn it the right way around. Once 
once you've poked your corners out where the opening is where you're going to fold those seams under so that they look nice and even from both sides and then we can go to the machine and we'll top stitch all the way around the edge. Okay, that's it for the sewing. And if you've put Velcro on yours, then you're completely finished and then you can start using it. We're not quite done yet because I'm using these snaps. And you can put as many as you like across. I'm just going to see how that looks with uh, four of them. Normally I'd like to use an odd number. Let's see if I can go three. I think I might just go three. Odd always looks better for some reason. I'll put three snaps on each side. So what the aim is, is to have this roll over and close up like this. Fold your fabric in half and we'll mark the center on each side. And then you can fold the fabric in half again and mark the center of that on each side. Then we can fold the other end in to the center. Okay, so these pins now are the positions of our snaps. They don't need to come in too far. So now that we've got our snap positions marked, we need to measure one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch in from the side and make a little mark in line with the pin that you've got there. We'll do that at all six points. And once you've marked your positions, just take a ruler and double check that your measurements are straight. I'm going to line up my fabric with one of these lines on my cutting mat. And then I'll just grab a ruler and line up the straight edge with the ruler with one of the lines on the cutting mat. And then I can just double check that the points I've made are correct. If they don't match up, you can make a little adjustment to just mark a larger spot there. It's going to be covered by your snap, so it won't be an issue. Once you're happy with the position of all your little points there, remove the pins and grab an awl and poke a hole right through. And now we're ready to put our snaps on. So we can place the pointy cap onto the outside edge on one side. Grab three of the same little closures for that one side as well. You don't want to get mixed up. So I've popped my snap through. Pop one of these over the top. And then with your clamping tool, place that on each side of the snap and press it. And we'll do the same for the other two on this side. Okay, that side's done. 
and you can see that even though I've moved the position of the little dots that I've made you can't see that underneath there I think that's a bit crooked and then on the other side we're going to put our snaps in the opposite way so we're with the outside we've got our snap caps faced up on the inside we want the little pointy caps coming from the inside not the outside and then you can grab the other side and clamp it down okay so you can see I've got the little cap on this side <laughs> I thought I got that wrong for a minute <laughs> and that will just clamp in place like that <laughs> totally confused myself all right job's done Still got confused and then all you need to do is clip it in place like that very simple to make so if you were in the car and you wanted to use as a soft cover for a seat belt you would just place that around the belt snap it closed and there you have a nice soft covering for your shoulder and if you have it nice and fleecy it'll be even more comfortable so that was a very quick video wasn't it didn't take long at all and it's really simple to do so this is one of those really large uh, luggage bags that I'd made in a previous video some time back what I've done is I've popped the shoulder strap over the top of the handles there and you can see that that sits nicely along the top there so it protects my shoulders and with the seat belt being around about the same width as this, it's going to nicely cover your seat belt as well. I think that's come up pretty well. Easy to remove, easy to wash if you need to, and also easy to modify. So if you wanted to have the luggage strap coming a little bit further down or made, made longer, just make it longer in the length rather than having a square piece of fabric. So it's really simple to modify. So it doesn't even matter whether you use Velcro or little plastic snaps or even if you wanted to sew a couple of buttons in there in place as well. Though I think buttons would probably get tangled up in hair if, if you had longer hair. <laughs> probably not a good idea. That's my one project down. I've got to try and get a couple more done. I've been trying to talk mum into joining me in a video one day but she refuses every time. Let's see if we can give her a little bit of encouragement in this video. <laughs> anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.